Two years since violent riots rocked London and other cities and towns across the UK and Britain's youth still feels left behind. Now with the government pressing on with cuts, thousands of young people are falling into long-term joblessness. What's more, the seeds were sown long before the unrest in 2011. Youth unemployment has been rising steadily since 2002 and the figure has almost doubled in the past nine years and currently stands at almost a million, meaning that one in five Brits aged 16 to 24 don't have jobs. And the number of those not studying is also on the rise. According to the universities and colleges admission services, applications from English students are at their lowest in the past four years. This as their tuition fees have tripled in 2012. RT Sarah Firth met a young Brit who took part in the riots two years ago to find out if anything's changed. Everyone felt like, I don't know, like they wanted to get one up on the police. That's what it was. I meet Charlie at his council house. It's been almost two years since his arrest and imprisonment as a result of his participation in the London riots. He received a six-month sentence for theft. But for Charlie, the impact of his actions have lasted far longer. Does it feel weird watching it back? Yeah. But in a way, I feel like I don't like looking at it. Because there's things there that ain't there no more, you know? How does it make you feel knowing you're involved in some of what went on? Like I said, it was a regret. That's the only sort of word I can really... I don't think it's big. I wouldn't... I would never do it again. Most definitely not. Charlie's one of those who would have been dubbed in the aftermath of the rioting with the term feral youth. Also, Polly Courtney met with many young people who'd got caught up in the violence, and her new book seeks to debunk what she says is an isolating and stigmatising title. I chose feral youth as a title deliberately because I knew it was a, it's a phrase that gets used by politicians and by the media to describe well, often to describe young people in general, which is just a complete misnomer, very unfair and, and just so inaccurate, almost 100% of the time. The motivations behind the riots were complex, but for Polly, basic economics play a key part. The rich-poor divide is so extreme at the moment and, and the poor are kind of seeing that and they're seeing that they're, you know, they're being left behind. That was a phrase that I heard in my research a lot, you know, we're being left behind. And um, so I think it might be the start of something more. I don't think the problems have gone away. So if they haven't gone away, then we're going to see more, more trouble until these things start to get resolved. Well, the spark that started the riots largely attributed to the shooting and killing by police of a man named Mark Duggan here in the London borough of Tottenham. Two years on and friends and family are still awaiting an inquest, expected in mid-September. But as they wait for answers, many questions still remain over the ensuing violence, some putting it down to mindless criminality, others to deep-rooted social problems that many feel still have not been dealt with. Indeed, youth unemployment in the UK remains at crisis levels. Latest figures show that nearly a million people between the ages of 18 and 24 are out of work. I never actually thought, oh, I'm going to join in. It's because I was so drunk and I didn't get nothing good from it. I didn't, I haven't gained nothing. Still in a council place, still on job centre, still looking for work. So I haven't gained nothing. I'm in the same sort of boat as I was before I went in jail, apart from with a criminal record now. At the time of the riots, the Prime Minister described the behaviour of people like Charlie as mindless criminality, pure and simple. I think they need to sort of have our side, like, listen to us more, because we're living the life. We're, we're basically in the slums. We haven't got nothing. So they need to sort of listen to us and let us just put our word across and maybe what we need or what we want. Not necessarily what we want, but what, what we need and what might help us. If David Cameron was in front of you right now, what would you say to him that you think young people need right now to help them? Like I said, more youth clubs and more things to do, maybe more funding to do things. He says that he's going to do this and that to help people, but when, when's that help going to be given? That's exactly what I'd say. When's the help going to be given? There's all this talk about this and that. There's no action. I haven't seen none or heard of none. Sarah Firth, RT, London.
The MP for Tottenham, where the unrest was sparked in 2011, has accused the government of burying the report on the riots. And more than uh, half of the panel's recommendations haven't been addressed at all in its final response, which was supposed to outline the efforts to tackle the causes of the protests. Let's talk more on that with Lee Jasper, social activist and London's former senior policy advisor on equalities. Good to have you with us here on RT. Now, there are increasing worries that Westminster is not doing enough to support Britain's young people. Do you share these concerns? I do. I, I think that the poorest sections of British society are now immersed in a vice-like grip of long-term unemployment, cuts to their essential frontline services, schools, nurseries, health services, education, housing, uh, and, and in, in a spiral, a vicious uh, spiral of decline uh, that can only exacerbate all of the social issues that gave rise to the disturbances two years ago. And let's not forget the issue of race and racism in this. Mark Duggan was a black man. He was shot by uh, an overwhelmingly white police force. Uh, the, in the backdrop to his shooting were the killing uh, and uh, 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 loss of life of a whole range of black men who died in very suspicious circumstances in police custody. And, and although the reaction to that was from all communities of all race and faiths, Nevertheless, it's important that we remember, as we reconsider two years ago, that race plays an important factor. And let me give you another example of that. You quoted the youth unemployment statistics. In January 2010, 56% of black youth in the United Kingdom were unemployed. That's an underestimate. It's a government assessment, but it's an underestimate. But speaking about the government, they, now, the government's response is that the programs, they do have programs that are supporting families and improving youth education, as well as tackling unemployment. unemployment. Are they not working? Is that, is that the case? Well, uh, the government is uh, one of the most incompetent post-war governments we've seen in British political history. All their initiatives t tend to uh, run into the sand, ending glorious, uh, uh, ineffective failure, uh, and don't meet the needs of the community. But let's, let's uh, the point I was making earlier is that this is a majority white cabinet. It's a majority male cabinet from Eton and Oxbridge. They have no understanding of race equality. And in areas like London and Birmingham, which are almost majority black and ethnic minority cities, these issues are becoming acute. So, with the figures rising every day, nearly one million young people now are out of jobs. So what, what's the way to turn this all around? We think that the way to turn it all around is to take a leaf out of the post-war post governments of British history. Uh, when, after the Second World War, the country was re recovering, we didn't use austerity to cut our way uh, through public sector spending to growth. We invested in major infrastructure, education, universities, hospitals, schools, railroad, radio, ra uh, road infrastructure, housing. These were the key developments that the government borrowed for uh, and borrowed money from the international markets to invest. This government has turned its back on that. And despite all the evidence that austerity is not only just not working within the United Kingdom, but not working right across Europe, uh, they persist relentlessly uh, with a strategy that has determinedly uh, been seen to fail. How volatile would you say the social situation in the UK is right now, post the 2011 unrest? Uh, well, I think all the conditions, all the conditions that give rise to the 2000, 2011 uh, 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 disturbances have been simply exacerbated, made more acute, uh, and there is a bigger group of people now affected. So I think that the likelihood of a repetition of the kind of scenes we saw 2011 is, is, is almost inevitable, uh, given the government's utter failure uh, to respond to the needs and the issues that were the causes and catalyst of uh, the 2011 disturbances. Now, the EU leaders, they, they do admit that youth unemployment is their most pressing issue. It's already established a fund of billions of euros to tackle the problem. Is that having any impact at all? Well, I'm not aware of a billion pound fund to tackle youth unemployment. What, I'm, what I am aware of is one million people on what we call zero hours contracts 
which means an employer can simply say, no work for you this week, you don't know how much you're getting paid or how much you, 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 you're earning. We have a million of our people on zero hours contracts. We have ever growing levels of youth unemployment. The unemployment situation for women in Britain now, given that they were the major uh, employees of the public sector, and we've seen half a million of those jobs go, means that women who are an important and integral part of communities and families have also seen their incomes being decimated. Uh, this government is really seeking to uh, provide its friends in, in the City of London with greater access to financial and we contracting opportunities, while at the same time immiserating the poor, uh, leaving them uh, uh, the wealth inequality gap between the riches and the poorest even wider than at any other time in British post-war history. Lee Jasper, social activist and former senior policy advisor on equalities, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us.